Trinidad. Good job. Yay, it's launch day. Look wow. at the water, we're a sailboat again. <laughs> Today is threatening to be quite glorious, actually. Looks like we found some wind. Now we're proper sailing. Things are on the up and up. Well, the first activity of the first day back on the boat, it is to get all of our transducers out. Let's do some like very minor essential minor. essential This is what jobs. you call minor. There's a two inch hole in the boat. My chain locker is done. It's carnival here in Trinidad. Uh, what we've decided to do today is actually take a day off from some boat work. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Trinidad. Thank you, first and foremost, to Kumar and his family. Oh, it's a radio and show. It is a radio Good show. Morning, Good morning, Trinidad. <laughs> I'm not starting again. Thank you, first and foremost, to uh, Kumar and his family for bringing by a big basket of uh, local fruits and things. It was very kind of you. It was lovely to meet you both. And a special thank you to Claire and Johnny, who we met yesterday, who took us out for a little bit of a tour of the island now that the work on the boat is finished. And they're very graciously today taking us out on their stink boat uh, to do a little bit of reconnaissance on some of the local spots in Trinidad. So the, as I probably said earlier, the anchorage right out front of where Peak's yard is, which is the yard we're in now, is a little bit hectic. There's a lot of commercial traffic and uh, it's generally just not the best place you would you, you could sit for an extended period of time. You absolutely can, but it's not. There's better, better options. Um, so when we splash down, we hope to spend as little time out there as possible and as much time as possible in the other lovely options, which we will hopefully explore today. I've said this a bunch of times in the video, but like Trinidad, Good job. Like everyone we've met has just been an outstanding ambassador for Trinidad. It's, it's sort of customary to speak very kindly of places that you're being hosted by, but like above and beyond other places we've been, like just good job Trinidad, way to represent. So let's get on with it. Trinidad is located on the northwest coast of Venezuela. The bulk of the cruising activity in Trinidad occurs on the western approach amongst a handful of small islands nestled between Venezuela and the main island of Trinidad. The key spots on today's agenda were the Trinidad and Tobago Sailing Association, Scotland Bay, Turtle Bay and Chakachikari Island. The following day, things were getting serious in the yard. Yay, it's launch day! Yes, it's today, finally! We're uh, going back in the water after about a month on the hard. A lot of it was because we just wanted the convenience of being on the hard and the ability to go and explore without having to stress about what's happening with the boat, where we're going to store it while we're away from the boat and all that stuff. But it's been a really nice time off the boat, oh, sorry, uh, on the heart. It's actually unheard of for us to have a really lovely time. <laughs> anyway, back in the water. Adam, standard. Always tense in splash out mode. The reason for Adam's apprehension was today is the day that we find out whether our new transducers were well seated in the hull and wouldn't leak. If we've not done a good job on the seal, we'll need to immediately pull the boat back out the water and start all over again. The aim of the game when splashing down a boat is to jump on board as quickly as possible and check every seacock and seal for leaks as quickly as possible. Well, so far she floats. Good, no sinking just yet. Thankfully, everything went off without Woo! a hitch. <laughs> <laughs> now your voice is just breaking. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god, I chopped. Okay, chopped lovers in depth. I don't oh, even yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. They pretty you much just shoved us out. Okay, you. They go. really did. They're like, go, go, go. You ready? Go. I was like, um, oh, I thought I was going. going to be able to spend the evening here, maybe. <laughs> All right, chopped lovers. Yeah, they do not want us to stay. All right. Well, back in the water. This we. Oh, and covers. Yeah, they might have to. Okay. Oh god, we only set the depths. Alright, I, I know, I know. We reconnoitered it all yesterday. I can, I, I know roughly what the bank stuff is. Alright guys, back wow. in the water. We're back a sailboat again. We're not just a floating, oh. not floating palace. Oh, it's, <sighs> oh, it's, oh, like, oh, it's, it's so weird to, it's crazy. So weird to look at our depth sanders now and be like, oh, so hello. Nice <laughs> and you. I'm like, hang on a minute, this can't be our boat. Yeah. She's never been so happy. Luckily we kind of, did a bit of reconnaissance yesterday so we know exactly where to go i'm going to go around the corner to a place called ttsa which is like a insane school place um and tie up next to the dock and tomorrow we'll go on one of their moorings still need to do one or two small little jobs now that we're back in the water but we're back in the water Woohoo! Ah, we're floating people again yes such a good feeling yep. such a good feeling i see you trying to capture me being silly <laughs> it's a rarity <laughs> Oh, you have to not good silly for the camera. to be back on the water. And moving and everything being smooth so far, that's good. I always am of the opinion that, and this is like before we go for a sail, before we go back in the water, something's bound to break. And that's so that I don't get disappointed when it happens. Well, let's not will it into existence. Yeah, let, let me not prattle on about this. Anyway, we're on the water. We've been good to her and she's going to be good to us. Like, she's never been in such good shape. She's got all new instruments, like, seacocks have all been checked, one has been removed, she's got new plumbing, pressure post was just done, rig's just been done, new fancy new dodger, which you haven't shown off yet. No, I have not. Like, she's in great shape, absolutely. Like, she's got new chain plates, new uh, backing plates for the windlass, the, the anchor well's been spruced up and painted. A lot, like, we've done so many little things that we lose track of the little things we've done. She should be very happy with us. The boat even now has winch covers. Yeah. There was that little to do and Adam really hated the fabric of port. I don't know if you said this on camera already, but I basically gave Piara the ultimatum. I said, if that fabric is not gone, by the time we splash down, it's going in the bin. And in a week <laughs> and a half, I had a new dodger, a new winch covers, uh, rope bags. What else did you do? Uh, new I made couch new covers for the bed. New couch covers. Fitted sheets for the bed. So not only is that a testament to Kiara's prowess with the sewing machine, but it also illustrates <laughs> just how much fabric we've been schlepping around for the last 24 ah, months. Oh. Ah, but I am grateful that you did it all, because it's like, honestly, this dodge is your best effort yet. It is yes. absolutely top notch. So just up ahead on the right of us now, we're passing a, uh, a functioning in-service prison island. Apparently it's not, you know, super max, the worst of the worst. But uh, yeah, but it is still a very much functioning prison. I mean, to be fair, I, I have legitimately seen resorts <laughs> like all up and down the Lesser Antilles that look exactly like that. So <laughs> can't be that. Maybe it's a white collar prison. Our destination was to be the Trinidad and Tobago Sailing Association, about three miles east of the Chagaramas. This mooring field is well maintained and doesn't get nearly as much commercial traffic. So it's a nice place to tie up loose ends before we set off for the Out Islands. All right, we we are. Uh, we've enjoyed a few beverages. We have celebrated splashdown day. We're actually going to enjoy what life is like to be quiet, moving again. Quiet and darkness. Yeah. Like one of the things you never really, no one tells you about living in the yard. It can be super quiet, don't get me wrong, at, at night. But the mozzies and the lights, like you're under fluorescent lights and it yeah. just gets through every window and oh, I don't know about you guys, but I cannot sleep if there's medium level light. I need, I need darkness. Yeah. I need darkness. And we should be gently rocked to sleep. With gently a rocked bit of to sleep with swell. the gentle creaking of the rigging and nothing but pitch black yeah. Atlantic Ocean darkness. Soon. Anyway. We're in the water, everything's going wonderfully. The motor ran beautifully on the way yeah. over here. Uh, so what, where we are now is a place called TTSA, Trinidad and Tobago Sailing Association. We're on the wall because no one's around to help us get to a mooring. 
Uh, in the morning we'll be moved out to the mooring field where we'll stay for a couple of days just to get the boat squared away, get a few in the water jobs done. Um, and yeah, then we're off exploring the Down Islands, man. Mon. Mon. I might have to cut that. Bye. That was a they bit say bye. They don't say mon here, they say bye. We're going down island bye. That wasn't bad. We'll, we'll cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> The following morning, we were off the dock and to the mooring field. All alone again tonight, but you don't seem to forget about yourself. Unlike most mooring fields, this one has ties for the bow and stern, so navigating through the field requires a little more care than usual. And we are on the mooring. This is lovely. So it's actually only about eight o'clock in the morning. Um, but because the wind tend to pick, tends to pick up over the day, we thought it'd be really nice to just go out here right now onto one of the moorings. They've got a bow um, mooring and a stern mooring, and then they've got a kind of slime line or a lime line that's in between them that you pick up. So we've just got somebody from the place to come and help us. And then uh, what you do, it's like they offer a service apparently here, where if you um, blow a signal horn or a whistle or whatever it might be, um, they'll come and get you in the dinghy and they can drop you back as well. So if you didn't fancy putting a dinghy in the water like this one, then they can just uh, you know, taxi you to and from. Not all hours of the day, but uh, I think until like 7 p.m. or something. Anyway, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so I think for us, time for breakfast, a bit of coffee, and settling into life back on the water. Just coming back onto the water, I'm making us a special meal. Ribs are super, super cheap here. Like we've actually never been in a place where you can get a rack of ribs, a rack of ribs for ten dollars. So we've been like, I bought them once, and this is the second time we've got them. And um, Adam very, very much likes them. So this is our celebratory meal. I'm going to make some tostadas too with some plantain as well with it, which is kind of like chips. I made them back in Puerto Rico. Super yummy. Dessert. Brownies! I'm actually gonna put it in our pressure cooker because this is what we tried last time and it literally cuts down the time from like three, two, three hours in the oven of which we just don't have the gas for into like 45 minutes or 40 minutes in a pressure cooker. It's, I love, I love a pressure cooker. Our celebratory meal finally being back in the water. So all that weight we lost doing all the work in the yard, we're just yeah. gonna eat it yeah. again now. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> It's totally healthy, it's got greens in. Today's the day. We're going out sailing, sort of. It's um, It's been a bit hit and miss with weather, as in not bad, just super calm, which has been lovely as far as being on a mooring ball goes, but not so great for a shakeout sail. Today is threatening to be quite glorious, actually, so we're gonna go just cause. Um, we're having some fabrication done, which we'll circle back to later. But yeah, today's plan is just to get off this ball, put some water through the motor, put some wind through the sails, shake it all out, and, uh, and hopefully end up somewhere else tonight. With the bulk of the work behind us and Millie in great shape, it dawned on us that though this was a small step, it was one of the first in an exciting new sailing adventure that we've set out for ourselves. With the remote jungle anchorage as our destination, it was hard not to feel excited. Not afford the rights to that song. Ah! Because we don't have tracks that run along the side of our, on our decks or on the 
deck roof, deck house. Uh, we, need, we have separate blocks that kind of get clipped onto the tow rail, which means that whenever we come back to the boat after a period away, we kind of forget where they're <laughs> clipped on. So right now you'll see that this sail, eh, it doesn't really look so good because the blocks aren't in the right place. So uh, when we're back at anchor or when the sail isn't on that side and there's a lot of pressure on that side, we'll move them across. <laughs> That block back and that block forward. You might be wondering why the motor's on. That's because we're uh, a bit deficient in power and I just want to get some some turns on the prop and just, you know, we actually hasn't had a good run for months. So just to make sure everything's good, put lots of water through it, make sure everything's functioning and we need the power. Motor on or off any day under a blue sky in a full canvas is a good day. Over there is uh, Chagaramas, which is where we got hauled out, and it's just kind of around a bit of a corner from where we were. So we've just gone around a place called Five Islands, which uh, we actually went through the place called Five Islands, and we're just going to go a few more islands up to Scotland Bay here. Um, yeah, it's pretty nice though, just looking around at all the little islands here, seeing which islands have houses on, and thinking, how do we even get to shore? It's actually pretty cool because we did manage to uh, make some friends here who live here, um, called Johnny and Claire. And every morning they hop in their dinghy, then they drive over to the main island, hop in their car and then go to their jobs. So that's how they would get from one place to the other. So they obviously don't have a car uh, in the place where they live, they just dinghy straight to their house. They have like something called, a, I think he called it the Island Owners Association. Not that they own the island, it's something like that. Anyway, it's the house owners on the out islands. So, that, and they have like a, it's like a yacht club or a dinghy club, if you will, and they basically roll the dinghy up, they haul it out of the water, and you, you get, so you get a car park at the club and a dinghy berthing, whether that's a mooring ball or they bring it out of the water so that you can always transit to and from your, your house on the island. And that all just gets managed as part of, like, they all get together and they manage it themselves. So it's quite, it's quite cool how they've, like, managed to sort of innovate around not having infrastructure between these islands and still use the real estate because it is incredible where some of these houses are. There's just nothing there. Looks like we found some wind. There's a few white caps out, which is good. Now we're proper sailing. How's it feel to be back on the water, babe? It's bloody good. It feels really, really good. The last few days I've been really like, I've been itching to go for a sail. I really, really have. I've just been, I've wanted the uh, the water running across the, the, yeah. <laughs> nah, can we, can been... we shelf this conversation for once we put a quick tack in, because we're about to stray into a, an oh. oil rig mooring field. Not that that's a problem, but okay. um, let's just do that. Yep, so Hold that thought. Alan doesn't know what he's done. He's pressing random button for the auto pilot. Right, that's all. I'm going to take over manual. <laughs> uh, oh, I forgot what to do. Down. How do you press tack on your auto pilot? The downside of a cutter when it's super calm, she uh, gets a bit hung up on the inner stay. Right, we're coming through now. Not really much wind today. It's fluky because they're the land. Yeah. Anyway, false alarm. Well, actually, that was fine. If you look at the map, it was like, oh, a little aboard, and now we're back on a much better line. It's just a little uh, tactical maneuvering there.
All right, well, we're not stern too, but it is lovely, and I think we found ourselves in a nice little spot. I just have to uh, observe the anchor and make sure we don't clock around every which way. But, you know, I think it's only right that we do that with beer in our hand, given that it's just gone quarter to one. So, a responsible skipper would insist. <laughs> See you there. That's good. That's it, not the beer. <laughs> The, uh, just being back underway, you know, being in a quiet anchorage. Lots to see, lots to do. Have a, just had a little sail. As far as I can tell, all the systems work beautifully. It's good. Times are going. Things are on the up and up. You heard it here first? Mm -hmm.